Hello everybody, it is I, the Waluigi Big Mac, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time we're doing Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Well, technically we're on the Ace Attorney Trilogy uh, main menu right now, but yeah, this is what we're doing, Ace, Ace Attorney. I'll probably I'll eventually do Justice for All and Trial of Tribulations, but well, we're doing the first game, which is uh, Ace Attorney. First, so we're gonna be so obviously we're we're gonna be doing every single episode. So, so yeah, we're, episode one, uh, first turnabout. Yep, yep, yep. Wow, I got an achievement. Neato. <gasps> Blood with a finger statue. <laughs> Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I've got, I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. All right. So for a bit of context, I've def I played the first two uh, cases of this game before, and I've seen this game like. Uh, Quite a bit, so I think I can probably competently get these court cases done, or like get these uh, turnabouts uh, done with like no mistakes. But eh, you never know. Boy, boy, I am nervous. Right, and there's, there's a, uh, oh, there's me. Uh, oh, oh, hiya, chief. Woo. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons... He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help... I want to help him out any way I can. I just... I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Is that... Your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like... It sounds like... It sounds like he wants to die. Excellent observation, Mia. Um, yeah. And... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay. I was not expecting to put his last name. This is Larry Butts, folks. Yes, that's his name. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. As he's sweating. Sweating his balls off right now with this goatee. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's it's all over. I'm I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspaper said it was you. Specifically, you and Red there. My name is Phoenix Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best, my best friend since gr grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. 
in the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just, he just has terrible luck. Man, he's just like me, for real, for real. <laughs> oh, man, the amount of times I've gotten screwed over just because of my crappy luck is astounding. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I own one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Oh, God, oh, God, ugh. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Bunce. The, prosecu the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, uh, a little nervous. God. Sorry about that, folks. I got a bit of disturbance. Your conduct during, your conduct during this trial will decide for your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Head shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. It says them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. That would be Larry Butts. The, the defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your words about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Ooh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Ah, uh-oh. No, no way I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim? Of course I know the victim's name. I, uh, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel migraine coming on. Look. The victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who's the victim in this case? Well, we just have to hit tab here and we pull up our inventory here. Attorney's badge. No one would believe I'm a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Oh, man. The amount... The sudden urge to want to show this to everything possible is always there. It's really funny. Anyway. Anyway, so we have the autopsy report here for Cindy. And we press R, we show up with, uh, we have some profiles. So we have Mia, Mia Faye, chief attorney at Faye Co., my boss, and a very good defense attorney. Larry Butts, uh, defendant in this case, a likable guy who's been friends si since grade school. Winston Payne, prosecutor for this case, lacks presence, generally bad at getting his point across. And then Cindy Stone. The victim in this case, a model she lived in an apartment by herself. Wait, really? Back, back, back space for... Back. Okay. Anyway, uh, so our options is Mia Fey, Cinder Block, it's... <laughs> Cinder Block's a funny one. But the, the defendant is Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name... Or, sorry. Victim, that's what I meant. Uh, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, dummy, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. He's like, don't feel relaxed. That's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Yes, yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the ob that object was? The, the murder weapon! Oh god, I can't- I, I'm trying to f figure out what voice I did for him uh, first. When he first showed up. Before that distraction uh, caught me off guard. Uh, the, mur the murder weapon was his statue of the thinker. 
It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to the to any end of it. Bleh, to any evidence at it during the trial. The evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Mr. Green, the prosecution may call its first witness. The, the, the prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help you help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. I don't know why Felix is getting a bad feeling. Up, oh, up! Oh, I see Larry Twitch there. Ahem! Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey! Watch it, Butt! We're, we were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet! Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Um, didn't... Um, didn't they all die? It wasn't dumped, she just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it doing anyway? Mr. Butts, would you, would you describe this generally what we mean as by dump? In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She, she had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day she died. Passport. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on July 30th, the day before the murder. Hmm, <clears throat> indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sh daddies? Sugar? Yes, older man who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude, we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butt. What, what do you think of her now? Right, I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? <laughs> Wait and see what happens. Nah, we're gonna stop him from answering. My client has no, had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to the case. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Ah, boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment the day of the mur murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? Eh, eh, well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. God damn it, Larry. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? Have him answer on honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Order. Order. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude. Dude! Chill! She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant's lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies the matter. Who is your witness? The man... The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fle fleeing from this... Scene of the crime. Order. Order. Order of the court. Mr. Prank, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, yes. Well, yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank, Frank Shawit to the stand. 
Oh, look at this guy. He has a punchable face. Mr. Solid, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes. News newspapers, yes. Mr. Solid, you may proceed to your with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw the day of the murder. Time for the witness to testimony. Witnesses account. I was going I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man flee in an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Why are you, why do you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't, aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. That, that, that doesn't look like a cord. A, oh, actually, that is a cordless phone. Never mind. Your Honor, I have a re record of, of the blackout for for your per for usual. Mm. Blackout record. Electricity to, to Mr. to Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to six. Okay, so. Yeah. To 6 p.m., the day of the crime. No. No, Mr. Wright. Yes, yes, er, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross examination. C cross examination, Your Honor. All right, right. This is it. Th the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then the witness, then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the keys, and it's it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court records and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradiction, contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with tap. Then point out contradictions in the testimony. Alrighty. So this is where the bulk of the gameplay is. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna press him further for each for each one. Isn't the man leaving the apartment a common sight? I find it odd that you would take notice of him. Er, uh, <laughs> I don't know. He just seemed strange to me. That's all. Like he was mad, yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the, the scene of a crime. The best request the witness refrain from from conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? Thought so he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Half open, you say? Yes, yes, the door was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd, in a big city like this, I thought. I, I see, so what happened next? Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door's half open, you see. Isn't only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. Karen words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Hmm. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened next? I'm losing my voice, by the way. <coughs> I'm no longer going to do the voices for the rest of the episode, because, oh man, my... Because I recorded the last two Pizza Tower uh, episodes before doing this, so yeah. Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Mo not moving. Dead. Are you sure she was dead? 
Oh man. I had a feeling that was that was what's gonna pop pop up. What? Well, no, I guess it I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look look fatal to anyone. Very well. What happened next? I quailed in front and found myself unable to go inside. So, you didn't touch anything in the apartment. Um, yes. I mean, no. Nothing. Okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately. You thought to call the police. Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police. What happened next? However, the phone in your apartment wasn't working. The phone in your apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no. No, it wasn't. Right. But you said it, you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh, that, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside to try using that to call. And the phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no there was no answer at the nearby uh, apartments. All right, what time did she call again? I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Hmm. Let's see. Time at... Aha! It was 1 p.m. But... You found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yes, it was 1 It was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy note that the time of death was some... Uh, the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was no body to... Er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, er. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, er, uh, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, Wright. Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Alrighty, what, what kind of plot hole are, are you adding in this time? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it, it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must must have been watching that video uh, of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Okay, I already, I already know uh, where the contradiction is. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on, on the taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. And yes, we do. Because, as you may see... Blackout record? Objection. This is where the contradiction is. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or video. I well, the the French are point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now, Mr. Sawit. The court would prefer to hear an, an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. Dark, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It uh, must have been sh the shock of finding the body. 
very well, Mr. Solvent. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear at the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't it there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must... That must have been what I saw. So you saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Well, here's the thing. It was a statue, a, a miniature statue of the thinker. Solid. The murder weapon. Tap. This was a... Uh... Wait, just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was, it was a statue. Now, how's this supposed to be a clock? What? You... Yeah, you and you and your you you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Solid. Hey, I I saw it there. Okay, that's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Payne. As someone just stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says it's the time out loud. It doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness' testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony? I, Your Honor, there is a gap and hole within the witness testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness, yet the witness te testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a con contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because... You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there. In there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Solid. The sound must have left in quite an impression on you. Understandable since the murder weapon just spoke as you as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you're so certain about the time. Wait, what, what, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the, would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that, I, I never... Look, I, the clock, I heard, no, I saw, I saw... It. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. I, I would have had the same face as Phoenix did if someone threw their fucking, uh, comb over at me. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It was him. I tell you, it was him. I saw him. He killed her, and he should burn, burn, give him death. Order, order in the corner, sir. Your Honor, uh, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claim. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, he claimed the sound of the witness heard came, came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound of Mr. Solid word was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock. Now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So we heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it, what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Solid heard and the actual time of death. So Mr. Solid, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! Ha ha! You forgot one thing. Ah, uh, 
Uh-oh. What is he talking about now? Well, it may seem like that the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running th three hours slow the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I supposed to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you induct indict a witness. Unfortunately, this ends across examination of Mr. Frank Sullivan. I come all this way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Gah, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Solowitz. Mia, yeah, I mean, Chief. This is up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow that day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason. You have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of the reasons on why the clock would be three hours slow? Actually, yes. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have the evidence somewhere that you can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you said the clock was already running slow the day of the murder. Have you found the evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can, that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock is slow. It's the attorney's badge! No, it's the uh, passport. The victim had just returned home uh, from abroad the day before the murder. As we know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day over there. The clock wasn't running 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Up and... Up and... There he goes. Order! Order! I'm oh, sorry. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we expect all expected. Mr. Frank, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone com complain a defense so quickly and find a true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only formality, but this force finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Alright. Also, those sprites do does not look right. Because it was originally pixelated, and obviously this is an HD remaster, but, uh... It turns out that Frank Solowit was a, was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were, were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Solowit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Solowit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. And just like that, we got the full story. Woo, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job on it. Good, good job in there. C congratulations. Th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen the trial and on such a satisfying note. I've never, I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My, my life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. 
Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was, a. Uh... Ah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <clears throat> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlights now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I also want to got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. But, really? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't make... Don't, don't that make you want to cry? Just cry. Larry. Are you so sure? Ex excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you, you don't gotta sympathize with me. So, it's okay. Oh, I'm not... I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friends? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? I believe she's talking about this. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick, I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize that things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And, our, and in order to believe them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what, what you believe in. Never. Well, I, th I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? We'll drink to a toast. Uh, we'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. You're saying part of why you became a lawyer was because, because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe. Over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's sure, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless he, unless he count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I wouldn't be able to keep. Ooh, foreshadowing. Now, here's the thing. I can go right ahead and start the next episode right here, right now. However, I think it's a bit better. However, yeah, save. Yep. However, I think it's... No, 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 no. No, we're not. No, we're not starting this now. All right, we we are not starting this now. Alrighty. So anyway, this is the end of today's episode of uh, Phoenix Wright. If you guys enjoyed the content that I do, please consider subscribing, as I really appreciate it. And maybe comment, like, up channel grow. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode where, uh, well, we we got another uh, turnabout to deal with. So I think it makes sense if we. Uh, Actually, I, I don't remember what I was going to say. But anyway, next episode, another turnabout, another murder, blah, blah, blah. Uh, have a good one, folks. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.